presents Ethel Barrymore and Robert Young. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents a special Holy Week program, The Passion and Death of Christ, starring Ethel Barrymore. And now, here is your host, Robert Young. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now, The Passion and Death of Christ, narrated by Ethel Barrymore. when Jesus had ended all these words, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days shall be the Passover, and the Son of Man shall be delivered up to be crucified. Then they were gathered together the chief priests and ancients of the people into the court of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas. And they consulted together that by subtlety they might apprehend Jesus and put him to death. But they said, not on the festival day, lest perhaps there should be a tumult among the people. And when Jesus was in Bethania in the house of Simon the leper, there came from a woman having an alabaster box of precious ointment and poured it on his head as he was at table. And the disciples, seeing it, had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And Jesus, knowing it, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For the poor you have always with you but me you have not always. For she, in pouring this ointment upon my body, hath done it for my burial. I say to you, wheresoever this gospel should be preached in the whole world, that also which she hath done shall be told for a memory of her. Then went out one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, to the chief priests, and said to them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? They appointed him 30 pieces of silver, and from thenceforth he sought opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of the Asbis, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Pasch with thy disciples? And the disciples did as Jesus appointed to them, and they prepared the Pasch. And when it was evening, he sat down with his twelve disciples. And whilst they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, that one of you is about to betray me. And they, being very much troubled, began everyone to say, Is it I, Lord? But he answering said, 
If he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, he shall betray me. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe be to that man, and by whom the Son of Man shall be betrayed. It were better for him if that man had not been born. And Judas that betrayed him answering said, Is it I, Master? And he saith to him, Thou hast said it. And whilst they were at supper, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye and eat. This is my body. And taking the chalice, he gave thanks and gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto the remission of sins. <laughs> I say to you, I will not drink from henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I shall drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my Father. And a hymn being said, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. say to thee that in this night before the cock crow thou wilt deny me thrice Peter says to him yea though I should die with thee I will not deny thee in like manner said all the disciples then Jesus came with them into the country place which is called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples sit you here till I go yonder and pray and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to grow sorrowful and to be sad. Then he saith to them, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Stay you here and watch with me. Going a little further, he fell upon his face, praying and saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh to his disciples and findeth them asleep. And he saith to Peter, What? Could you not watch one hour with me? Watch ye, and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again the second time he went and prayed, saying, my father, if this chalice may not pass away, but I must drink it, thy will be done. And he cometh again and findeth them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And leaving them, he went again. And he prayed the third time, saying the selfsame word. Then he cometh to his disciples and saith to them, Sleep ye now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Behold, he is at hand that will betray me. As 
he yet spoke, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the ancients of the people. But he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that is he, hold him fast. And forthwith coming to Jesus, he said, Hail, Master, and he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, where to art thou come? Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and held him. And behold, one of them that were with Jesus, stretching forth his hand, drew out his sword, and striking the servant of the high priest, cut off his ear. Jesus saith to him, Put up again the sword into its place, for all that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot ask my father, and will, he will give me presently more than twelve legions of angels? How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? That so it must be done, in that same hour Jesus said to the multitudes, you are come out, if it were to a robber, with swords and clubs to apprehend me. I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple. You laid not hands on me. Now all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then the disciples, all leaving him, fled. But they holding Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the ancients were assembled. And the chief priests and the whole council sought false witness against Jesus, that they might put him to death. And they found none, whereas many false witnesses had come in. And last of all, there came two false witnesses. And they said, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and after three days to rebuild it. And the high priest rising up said to him, Answerest thou nothing to the things which these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest said to him, I adjure thee by the living God. Thou tellest if thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith to him, Thou hast said it. Nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of God and coming in the clouds of heaven. And the high priest rent his garment, saying, He hath blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold now, you have heard the blasphemy. What think you? But they answering said, he is guilty of death. But Peter sat without in the court, and there came to him a servant maid, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And as he went out of the gate, another maid saw him, and she saith to them, there, this man also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I know not the man. And after a little while they came and stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for even thy speech doth discover thee. Then he began to curse and to swear that he knew not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he had said before the cock crow, Thou wilt deny me thrice. And going forth, he wept bitterly.
And when the morning was come, all the chief priests and ancients of the people took counsel against Jesus that they might put him to death. And they brought him bound and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, who betrayed him, seeing that he was condemned, repenting himself, brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and ancients, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? Look thou to it. And casting down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, having taken the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them in the corbona, because it is the price of blood. And after they had consulted together, they bought with them the potter's field to be a burying place for strangers. For this cause that filled was called Haseldama, that is, the field of blood, even to this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was prized, whom they prized of the children of Israel, and they gave them unto the potter's field, as the Lord appointed to me. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus saith to him, Thou sayest it. And when he was accused by the chief priests and ancients, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Dost not thou hear how great testimonies they allege against thee? And he answered to him, Never a word. So that the governor wondered exceedingly, now upon the solemn day, the governor was accustomed to release to the people one prisoner whom they would. He had then a notorious prisoner that was called Barabbas. They therefore being gathered together, Pilate said, Whom will you that I release to you, Barabbas or Jesus that is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And as he was sitting in the place of judgment, his wife sent to him, saying, have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Pilate saith to them, What shall I do then with Jesus that is called Christ? And they all say, Let him be crucified. And the governor said to them, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And Pilate, seeing that he prevailed nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, taking water, washed his hands before the people, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. Look you to it. And the whole people answered, said, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he having scourged Jesus, delivered him unto them to be crucified. And the soldiers of the governor, taking Jesus into the hall, gathered together unto him the whole band, and stripping him, they put a scarlet cloak about him, and planting a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand. And bowing the knee before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And spitting upon him, they took the reed and struck his head. And after they had mocked him, they took off the cloak from him and put on his own garments and led him away to crucify him. And going out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon. Him they forced to take up his cross. And they came to the place that is called Golgotha, which is the place of Calvary. And they gave him wine to drink mingled with gall. When he tasted, he would not drink. And afterwards they had him crucified. They divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, They divided my garments among them, and upon my vesture they cast lots. And they sat and watched him, 
and they put over his head his cause written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They were crucified with him two thieves, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they that passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple of God, and in three days dost rebuild it. Save thy own self, if thou be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. In like manner also the chief priests and the scribes and ancients mocking said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him now deliver him if he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some that stood there and heard said, This man calleth Elias. And immediately one of them running took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And the other said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to deliver him. And Jesus again crying with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. temple was rent in two from the top even to the bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were rent and graves were opened many bodies of the saints that had slept arose and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection they came into the holy city and appeared to many the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus having seen the earthquake and the things that were done were sore afraid saying indeed this was the son of God the Sabbath when it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and coming rolled back the stone and sat upon it and his countenance was as lightning and his raiment as snow and the angel answering said to the women fear not for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And the eleven disciples went into Galilee, unto the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And seeing him they adored, but some doubted. And Jesus coming spoke to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the world.
This is Robert Young again. I'm sure you were just as thrilled as I was with Miss Barrymore's reading from the New Testament. The story you heard tonight is a true story, hundreds of years old. It's a story that will never die so long as someone lives to read it or to tell it. And that story is especially wonderful for this program, Family Theater, because it's a story of sacrifice. And after all, the story of your family, of any good family, is a story of sacrifice, isn't it? What mother has not given up much for her children? What father hasn't sacrificed for his wife and family? Keeping a family together, whether that family is just two people, a husband and a wife, or a big family with many children, keeping that family together and happy demands continual sacrifice on your part. Sometimes the things you must do and the things you must do without are almost too much to bear. But you need never despair, because you can do anything with help. And you can always, always get the most wonderful, most powerful help in all the world just by asking for it. Ask God for his help. His help is so easy to get. Just say a prayer together with your family. So tonight and every night, thank God for what you have and ask him for what you need. If you've never turned to God before and you turn to him now, this will indeed be a joyful and happy Easter for you and your family. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you transcribed a special Holy Week presentation, The Passion and Death of Christ, starring Ethel Barrymore. Robert Young was your host. The script was written for Family Theater by John Slott, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present The Story of Little Tree, starring Edmund Gwen. Dick Contino will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Mm -hmm.